Roundabouts are another tool for the traffic engineer to use to make the roadway safer, to make intersections safer. A roundabout is safer than a normal, than a, say a signalized intersection or even a four-way stop control intersection, mainly because of slower speeds, uh, reduction in fatality crashes, reduced conflict points. When you have the, the traffic moving through the circle, uh, they're moving at a roughly a speed of 20 to 25 miles an hour. That's kind of the optimum for a, an urban roundabout, even a rural roundabout. And that lower speed also reduces the severity of your accidents. Your, whether it's a side swipe or a rear end collision, uh, it's, it's only at 20, 25 miles an hour, not at 50, 55, depending on you know, what cycle of the light you're going through or if somebody has run a stop sign. The roundabout would be a good tool to apply uh, in a rural setting or an urban setting when you don't have the high amount of traffic to really justify a signal, but you're having issues with your existing, say, two-way or four-way stop control. You're having some kind, you know, uh, right turn accidents or running the stop sign type accidents, and you need something that fills that void, that gap between full-blown signalized or even in some cases the requirement for putting an overpass in. Originally it came out as a modern roundabout and that was a name to differentiate it from previous circular intersections such as traffic circles or rotaries or uh, neighborhood traffic calming circles. They were called the modern roundabouts to distinguish them to say yes this is something different. We've got a lot more rules associated with the modern roundabout as far as approaching the roundabout, deflection of vehicles around the roundabout. The primary mechanism for a modern roundabout is yield on entry. Vehicles approaching the roundabout must yield to vehicles in the roundabout. This is probably that primary element of safety. If you compare that to a traffic circle or a neighborhood calming traffic you know, circle or any kind of large rotors you'd see in Europe, you've kind of got just a mass influx of vehicles and you, you get in as best you can, you get out as best you can. There's probably not even a controlled speed limit around those. And so it is very different if you see it in operation. In my experience, the public initially is skeptical. We're probably looking at these intersection changes from the standpoint of there's an issue, there's an accident issue, there was a fatality, there's some reason why we're looking at this. And so you present it from that sake, that, that aspect of this is what we have and this is what's happening. This is our proposal. We're going to change this intersection and we're going to put a roundabout in. Here's how you drive a roundabout. Here are the benefits of a roundabout. And then provide videos and walkthroughs and drive-throughs and, and different things. Once people see them in operation and once they go through them once or twice, it's acceptance. It's, it's wow, that's really good. That's really great. I was just, I went right through there especially when it's a low peak period. You're zipping through, you don't have to stop at a light or wait for no traffic to pass kind of situations. We've created a, a good product in the research. We've used the, the most current federal guidelines that are released and that's NCHRP Report 672. And it, it's freely available that you can take a look at it and read it. It's a lot of great information. We've used that to build our guidelines the design division is currently using the results from this research to rewrite the roadway design manual and add sections on roundabouts. And so that's forthcoming. 